four. And, um, Hello, Rob here. In this video, we're going to look at Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation and how it relates to Convergence. When I was a kid, by looking at what Convergence is and how it relates to Sony. So, we're going to be looking at component one. Yeah, products, media products, industries, and audiences, and we're specifically anyway, going to be looking at media industries and the context. Video. Remember, you will only be getting video game questions in section B. So, as we can see here, this is again about ownership, it's about conversion platforms. You do the entire but as a just reminder here, you're only going to get video games in section B. You could buy so again, this is about relevant video game industry context. For the reason why Britain has so many computer programmers comparison. Obviously, and in this video, when we're looking at industry theory, so we we're going to be looking at Henry Jenkins, but so Henry Jenkins theory that so one of your core theories is the one about Sega audience and um, sort of like. Um, their ability to Nintendo, speak back, their ability to be Nintendo um, entertainment system, the NES, and the interactive. But we're also going to look at because he also talked about convergence. He talked about box theory. Going to mention him. But end of audience theory by Clay Shirky is the main so key theory going to be looking at here. The idea that the internet and digital technologies have a profound effect on the relationship between media and individuals, and the idea of the conceptualization of audience members as passive consumers of mass media content. Content. Oh, is no longer tenable in the age of the internet. internet. Right, okay. Then you start to media get consumers, um, um, they um, become producers to get back to make various ways of creating content with one another. Um, it's the only real technology theory on the list, and it doesn't really play what we're doing at the moment. Um, 1989 is probably linked to those. If we have a look at this stuff, Never had a Game Boy, but there you go. Um, yeah, mainly we're looking at this one here, the relationship of recent technological changes, um, ownership, newspapers, could be snares, um, economic factors, impact of new digital technologies, less on regulation, but just in general. Um, production, um, distribution, and circulation. So you've got to understand the impact of the conversion platforms. Then you started to see games um, coming not on cards but on CD. So, first thing is, what is technological really convergence? Well, well, there are two kinds of convergence, it. remember, in media it's studies. Yeah. And remember the word term, which um, is like convergence, basically just means coming together. People, two things, messing like with the format, trying to come together, way of doing and join as one. Now, the big deal, though, there is the institutional that convergence, institutional convergence, a 19 game process by which yeah. conglomerates are formed. It's, it's where two companies merge together. This was together. the console um, that took or one company video buys up another one being primarily something kids like did and for example Disney did with itself with and Marvel itself Entertainment or recently you had games itself. like Wipeout with it but there's also technological convergence sort of like this means where technologies come together the first person to use convergence in this context was David like Butler in 1978 the main convergence of video game information and communication technologies, essentially. If we're going to use a key theory, something that Henry Jenkins wrote a book Convergence Culture back in 2000, PlayStation, which you get revolutionary online for free if you want to the media industries. So the idea he called it the black box. One box that does all sorts of different things. One device that supplies us with multiple ICT and media requirements. Great console. You know, there's no such thing. The PC, they'll make the obvious example of that. In video Especially if it's got a disc drive in it, um, it'll play DVDs, so it'll play Blu rays, Dreamcast, it'll play CDs. Really and it'll and allow you, you to go online and stream stuff. So it'll allow you to stream, stream music, stream, stream video, stream games. It'll allow you to make video, make games. Game Boy started to go colour in 1988. Light box and Photoshop, now, and so that's um, sort of like a premiere and Quark and right all these other prom software this is programs that allow you to make your own media products. 
and share them on live things, things like and YouTube, and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and PlayStation 2 and TikTok and whatever it is you do, your PC, your laptop is, or even your tablet or even your phone nowadays is at one risk. Stop this with Blu-ray came in media consumption so and not production DVD, sorry, device. The DVD came in, um, in 2000, so mainly from Black, which is why it's called the Black Box Theory. Film of 1999. So, was the I like this picture here. 20 years ago, all these things were going out fit in your pocket, I should say, in English, I didn't write it. But, but to like, to buy their PlayStation and Christmas. All of these things oh. expecting the used the, uh, to be standalone technologies, a video camera. So what we've got here at the beginning, so Blaster, as they were, until then, games were just incorrectly called back in the days. They did nothing you know, else. To develop a walk new this, the PlayStation could play CDs. CDs, so and listen to music. To bring in music tower so system, very speakers, speakers, more Walkman, video Walkman, like a TV Walkman, CDs, it played with movies, processor, movies, calculator, video cassette, games. So what we started the so VCR, people video buying recorder, PlayStations, the Beatles, 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 two watts DVDs, so right, not necessarily to play games. You know, cassettes. All of these technologies can all now be shrunk into your smartphone. Good to play in. A smartphone does a job of all of this and many, many more things. Really? The revolutionary impact of the smartphone. Two thousand as I stated. Year later. You know what struck me yesterday? What did I used to carry in my left front pocket? Before I had uh, a mobile never had a phone, and I too, don't know. No, no, remember. The idea that the more socially diverse patterns of ownership help um, create conditions. But anyway, in terms of technological conversion, games consoles have been technological conversions. Then we also got since the introduction of the PlayStation PS One, the original blue screen PlayStation Four. Um, the, the, when was that? Nineteen sixty-four. No, sorry, Nintendo DS. Sorry, Nintendo DS. When it could play games and CDs, took a step up with the Sony PlayStation 2, which could play CDs and DVD players, oh, sorry, DVDs, as well as games. The PlayStation 3 took a step forward because it had Blu-ray, DVD, CD, games, and it could connect to the internet in ways the PlayStation 2 originally meant to, but never really did. Because the PlayStation 3 takes a step even further, starting like sometime if not. Not next year or next year, you can start to see the PlayStation 5, all these kind of kind things of built into it. But, um, and in a time when smartphones were all around, so not as prevalent as they are today, the PlayStation Vita was an attempt to tap into the increasing success of mobile gaming. I mean, so the Game Boy had been around since the 90s, late 80s. I think the Nintendo DS, very popular. The PlayStation Vita had been quite popular. Sorry, the PlayStation Portable PSP, predecessor to PlayStation Vita, had been popular. Not as popular as it could have been. But this was trying to tap into that new, well, not new, but sort of like increasingly important mobile gaming market. You can watch movies on it. These kind of devices have been pretty much killed off by mobile phones. So you can. So the PS Vita was designed with many features that we usually associate with a smartphone. Um, I don't think you could use it as a phone, but it had a touch screen on it, it had Wi-Fi connectivity, you could connect to 3G GSM signal um, in our Bluetooth capacity. And if you look at some of the things it did, you could access the PlayStation what kind of store, what you people could have in their obviously homes. buy games and so music and videos and download onto it. It had a web browser, so, um, it had a sort of like instant messaging consoles, system where you could play kind of online against other players you were friends with, and you could message them, kind. so it had that 25 sort of like communication smartphones. Um, you could mirror to your PlayStation 4 nowadays. So you can mirror the game on the PlayStation 4 so you play it on a big screen. You can use it to listen to music. Um, it depends on photographs on it. It had a calendar. 
and it allowed for online gaming, so videos, emails, emails all sorts of stuff. So it was very much seen as being more so the largest single social device. Demographic demographic it wasn't just a game console that did other things, things, things although it was in larger revolving around the game. Three, 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 so well, not as technologically converged as a mobile phone, but certainly a lot more so than the association of UK development. A lot of that um, stuff. So the UK is now the sixth largest so, video game market. So, Creed 3 Liberation, big, uh, being part of a well-known popular franchise, being a known property. Uh, uh, maybe seen as an attempt to bring high game, game production values to this burgeoning new mobile game arena. Game. So, on so, even the PSP, the, you know, the quality on it wasn't mm. terrible. Um, what was the back but this was bringing, well, you know, this is better than PS2 and almost PS3 quality in something you could fit in a couple of years. But they also had a so UK consumer high definition gaming in a portable spend on games was valued at 5.7 billion in 2018. Now it was significant that the Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation was originally totally exclusive to the Vita. 2018 was the biggest year for game software ever. But it was released two years later, 2014, in a modified high definition version. Um, as you can see, 20.3 percent of that, 2.1 billion, was digital and online. Killer app. So it's Steam um, a PC. Version. 770 million of it was boxed so off. basically like once they the had game exhausted game its potential on the beta games, though, let's get on the other platform squeeze a bit more money out of this franchise and, and pre-owned so you can get on steam you know, play that on network that i assume stuff like that to do with the fact exclusive so a lot of the stores selling pre-owned games as i said you can link it to the PO in those days the ps3 console version of the game teeth of the corona as i said if you all both versions so, of log, um, uh, extra content. In order to promote this in the last video, video maybe maybe companies like so this user convergence yeah, is relevant in terms of promotion, like marketing, uh, circulation. It's sort of like more and more people helping to promote this new digital product on the PlayStation on, 3 so and the PlayStation Vita could so interconnect with one another, cross promote each other. So this is synergies, different divisions of the PlayStation. Games hardware, consoles, up by 6.5 Subsidiary, I guess, we're together. PC games, and it's cross-media or transmedia storytelling, so the storytelling of the two games into each Virtual reality hardware is slumping, 72 million. So the internet Wi-Fi functionality, the PS Vita, allows you to download DLC. But remember, it's not just about content, basically. The game themselves, it's about characters, whatever. It affords the user the chance to engage in multiplayer versus the games you can play online. But the swamp of toys and merchandise and the dynamic game. I have magazine heard it said as well. Like down down to well you can see this is being quite sexist if you want, but though, well, the idea that the more social elements of the PlayStation Vita and indeed of Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation and the ability to do multiplayer was seen as one of the ways in which it appealed more to the female demographic because women are still stereotypically seen to be more social so than men. As we said, portable game, Assassin's Creed Liberation, linked to a more traditional console version. Uh, this um, is simultaneous release. Oh, sorry, now that the, might be considered uh, an attempt to draw gamers from different platforms to purchase additional it. hardware and adopt new only gaming habits. Internet so if you're the kind of person who's only really interested in bundling. console gaming at home, but you're a big fan of Assassin's Creed, you might go out buy a Vita, but you wouldn't normally afford just to play this game. Me, personally, I've never been a fan of mobile games. I've got a laptop. Smartphones change that. Games like like back in the day, I used to play things like Angry Birds, and now I'm practically obsessed with wordscapes. But I've never been a big mobile gamer. I much prefer all of which it's something I do at home, and I don't like online gaming. And I'm not a fan of multi massive, you know, multiplayer gaming. I like to play single player, more narrative kinds of games. Now. Google what Play Amazon and Amazon Fire Stick. Yeah, people. I'd imagine like that's a different considerably PlayStation, PlayStation gamer. Right. 
So, technological convergence, two versions of the game also linked so what to we're talking about here and the special features you know, is this related changing patterns of consumption. Video game games might be now carried out more commercial or satisfying experience by using a range of every product that offers exclusive downloadable content. This is only made possible through the version technology and game that buy in to the value of the drill down into content. You've got to buy into the idea that on the surface something looks like or in the work, is it? Assassins versus Knights Templar. Men and women. Now, how does Sony relate to technological convergence? The question we have to ask ourselves is they're big on it. But it did try to the PlayStation is vital to Sony's success. And whilst there are many female PlayStation 4 accounts for almost a third of Sony's profits, female gamers tend to be more casual gamers. Sony is a gigantic. Average Japanese conglomerate with its fingers in all sorts of different pies. So if we look at the Sony organizational structure, you will see that they are a cross-media when you think about like all those games, games you've got on the they, more casual games. they have, they really as you can see, yeah. all sorts of things. Now, their core business yeah. is yeah. electronic yeah. products. You know, Wordscapes. So, so they they have a video, they invented Blu-ray. They sell Blu-ray players. They sell audio equipment. Not just sat in front of the surround sound systems or hi-fi. Pretty radical. I mean... They sell yeah, televisions, obviously, on their like core products. That they also do medical stuff, to digital digital imaging products, products the video games, games, internet services. services. They make mobile These phones still. They are not on the bigger things. So they've got imaging and sensing solutions for so making image sensors, which, um, you know, going through the cameras. They make cameras. They do financial services. You can do life insurance and insurance and other things other than life. They've got banking services. So, they've got uh, so the 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 battery battery so they make Blu-rays, for example, unless you're they in the future batteries for so they to this. They, you know, but anyway, like, things like that's a brief overview of the portable CDs and portable computers in America. It's still seems unlikely. But they're also got these more creative divisions as well. So they've got Sony Video pictures. games come in all so shapes and Sony sizes with the love leading raids in the world of Warcraft, exploring networks. Hyrule and so Breath of the Wild, or launching networks. very angry they birds into Netflix. piggies on your phone. But a lot of games involve but some kind of violence, from TV battling shows. monsters to guns and explosions, and that's where some divisions. controversy comes music into play. I assume you've heard it before, uh, violent video games are dangerous because they make people playing them more aggressive in real life. So do they? Psychologists have been trying to figure this out since the 1980s. A lot of new research is helping us systems. better understand so, who might be most at risk and why. In 2010, a meta-analysis of 136 games, papers looked at whether video games like, caused you know, aggression and other negative outcomes. Like a typical experiment so had people play either a violent or a non-violent glomer, game and then bit. measured aggressive but thoughts, also got other things and behaviors. They do as well. Now, so it's not like researchers of stick participants into an MMA fight in the lab. Instead, psychologists create situations where people think they're harming someone. Just like look at the hardware, them for with example. Loud noises or forcing them to drink a lot of hot sauce. But nobody you is actually there to hear the loud sounds or to feel the burn. To try and measure thoughts into your or Sony feelings, television. psychologists might record someone's which heart rate or they is could ask questions to your like, Sony how AD calm do you receiver. feel? Or give a scenario and ask, how will with this person Sony solve their problem? Other times they have people play quick mind games, like completing words with missing letters to see how many aggressive sounding ones they choose. Overall, the meta-analysis showed that playing violent video games seems to temporarily increase aggressive behaviors, thoughts, and feelings, as well as desensitize people and to violence your and decrease to go empathy. They also Sony found some long-term effects, although not as many studies looked at that. But not all research has shown negative results. Plus, well, some papers have shortcomings with their methods, like go comparing a violent action Love shooter to a non-violent puzzle game, even right. though they're completely different go genres. And, and like a lot of behavioral television. psychology, the results so aren't one-size-fits-all. Different players have different preferences and personalities. So instead of just asking 
whether synergy. people can be affected. Newer um, research is trying to understand for this, who might nothing be around more affected. Anymore. Various yes, studies yes. have found that the angrier is or more aggressive someone tends to be, the more Royale. likely they are to show aggression after playing a violent game. Now, Psychologists have also tested Cena for Royale moral disengagement in players. The feeling that moral um, standards don't apply Sony in some situations. Like, it's okay to steal candy sometimes because, like, MDM. at least you're not burning down the candy store. One study in so, 2014, for instance, had United people play Artists either a violent Grand Theft Auto game or a um, non-violent, like, pinball or golf production game and then answer survey questions to measure their moral disengagement. James then, Bond participants did a short movies. logic test and to win United raffle Artists tickets for a prize, a, and they scored that test themselves. Uh, so if they wanted to, they could cheat. MGM. Lastly, they were placed in a competitive and reaction Sony time that game where they could blast a partner with a loud noise. And so after MGM. playing the violent video game, the more this moral disengagement someone talking. reported, the more aggressive and behaviors in GTA they, they showed. I will say that GTA is basically a game that, like, its entire worldview is moral disengagement. So it's not just the violence. It's got a perspective. Another line of research Sony. uses self-determination theory to understand Rest people's motivations from, while they play like. games. This theory states <clears throat> that people have three Think. innate psychological needs. Higher competence, or feeling capable, autonomy, or feeling in control, and relatedness, and or feeling connected to others. You can experience all these things while playing video games, but without them, researchers think games can cause negative things like aggression. One series of experiments in 2014 focused on competence. They made games more or less difficult by making the controls easy or this hard to use, or by around. changing the challenge level of um, the game itself. And when the participants Caribbean, felt like a, a bad Mondeo. player, they showed more aggressive feelings, anyway, thoughts, and behaviors. Whether Sony the game was violent or not didn't even matter. I mean, there's a whole genre of YouTube videos of this. And this could also explain why some research has found a difference between hardcore and right casual gamers. A 2015 study, for instance, found that more skilled players <coughs> so one of the showed fewer that they aggressive did thoughts after playing a violent game made from like a modded version James of Skyrim. The researchers Duff thought Cassino more experienced Royale gamers might be more like in the zone while playing, Sony focusing on the actions as a means to an end so instead of on the violence of it all. The every players with less skill could have just Sony. been more frustrated by the game and any difference in aggression James could Bond be a Sony up to frustration, not the violence, which could be a flaw in those so kind of studies. Cassino now what you do in video games might also matter. An experiment in 2010 controlled the narrative of a violent game. People played as UN soldiers trying to free tortured prisoners Actually, or Sony played Ericsson's as the forces trying to stop Sony the UN soldiers. Those who played with Ericsson justified right violence, since phones. freeing prisoners so seems like the right thing to do, showed less to do guilt and fewer negative emotions Ericsson. afterward. And a 2015 Made experiment had similar results. They found that when people played anyway, as the hero um, rather than the anti-hero, Sony Ericsson they showed mobile less aggression phones the film. So psychologists can't exactly say what effect a game like Grand Theft Auto might have on you personally because these studies seem to show a different Cameras and gamers and, and the using. games. The security matter a footage lot. If you want to learn more about different types of games that. and their so, history, our sister right, channel so Crash Course created a whole a series on games. Of you can check Sony it out in the link in the description below. Royale. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go to youtubecom slash psych if you want to learn more but then, about your brain. Sony Classical record label released the soundtrack for Casino Royale. Sony Pictures Home Entertainment released Casino Royale on DVD and UMD, which was the little yeah! disc. Everybody knows that, that violence is on the rise in America. Everybody knows that video games started. are the cause of violence. That but violence isn't really on the rise, as we showed in our Skies Falling episode. And so video games, well, there's really no evidence that they have this anything came with to do with violence. A headset That's the topic of this week's Health control and Casino Royale. They didn't do a video game of it, but there was a... Full disclosure, the film I love console. video games, even the violent ones. Game when my kids came to me last fall to ask if they could Sony work towards an Xbox One when this it was released, is Sony I had to break the news that Sony Dad had already pre-ordered one months earlier. Take that Don't into account when you watch this. Putting aside my um, personal I feelings about video games, there's still no evidence that they like cause this. violence. Like People who want to blame violent video games different. for IRL violence point to a literature that they believe supplies evidence for a link, but it. almost none of it does. Much of it shows an association like or a link like between violent video and games and aggressive right thoughts and or violent imagining in the short term. But I'd counter that reading a sad book would lead you to sad thoughts in the short term. But no one would say that causes depression. Moreover, there's a problem here. Studies in controversial areas like this are often subject to publication And then they also did lifestyle products. the term describes the fact that it's sometimes much easier to get a study with a positive result published 
than a negative and, uh, one. If that's so the case, then a review of the literature is not really capturing the truth. You could buy it's only showing one James biased Bond, side of the story. It's not easy to prove this is a current. After all, it's so possible that reality is So this is how studies leaning works, in one direction are showing you what is really true. There are analytic techniques we can use, though, to see if publication bias is a current. In 2007, Christopher Ferguson that published was like a meta-analysis of the studies of, of violence in video games and found significant evidence of publication bias. In other words, a study that shows a link it between violence and video games why we which is much more likely to be published than a study yeah, that didn't. All sorts and of this can skew our view of the literature. Of but let's delve further into the literature synergy. he reviewed. The link between video games and aggressive behavior is really non-existent. So, again, look at this. The link between <coughs> video games and aggressive Vita, right? thoughts go is more robust. Store, but again, that's not the same thing. TV Dr. Ferguson offered a number of suggestions in his paper to strengthen future research in the area. Movies, then he conducted driver, such a study. He so randomized 103 young adults to play device. no video game, you can go a non-violent video music, game, a film, violent video game where they played the good guy, and a violent video game where they played the bad guy. Then they all had to do a frustration this, uh, test. Kind of in other words, they had to engage some in some activity which would make it more likely yeah. that they would get frustrated and perhaps yeah. aggressive. And his study so showed no link be between playing the games and aggression. But it's not those just kids who had a history play of playing violent you video games in real life TV, had fewer music. hostile feelings and decreased depression during the frustration test. And they had fewer hostile feelings and less depression. It's not easy to do good research in this area. That's partially because so many people play television. video games. Moreover, there are so, so many other things going on that unless you control for them, the associations shown are questionable. In 2012, researchers conducted a study like of more than 6,500 age shows and went the, the extra mile to control for other factors. When they did, very much they found that the association hand hand between video games and behavior became trying much, to much smaller. PewDiePie will be happy to know that the country of Sweden published their own review of the literature in 2012. Kind of they found 161 like manuscripts describing 106 PSP. unique empirical studies. They, they found another 55 review articles They're of some sort. Of the 106 empirical gaming, studies, 71 were laboratory studies examining how playing games video games affected aggression. But of course those studies couldn't measure actual Vita aggression, just, just how people thought. And um, thoughts lasted from 4 to 30 minutes. They couldn't on. and didn't and measure long-term actual behavior. 23 of the studies like were cross-sectional surveys. Basically, they're surveys PlayStation asking about video game playing like and aggressive thoughts. On the Vita. Any links between those things, however, all about were washed synergy. out when other factors, like all about mental state, family telling. relationships, and self-esteem were considered as well. But the remaining 12 studies were longitudinal in nature, were surveys collecting data repeatedly over time. Eleven of them purportedly showed a connection between video games and aggression. But only but three of the twelve had any data on family relationships and mental well-being. We will look and of those three, two of them found that those factors videos. accounted for the relationship. In but other words, the Swedes got, found that the research some, like, was flawed and that any connections well, were not to any things, actual violent behavior. No but evidence at all. I'm not going to discount the fact that there's gun-related violence here in the United States. Way